When we're programming a part, it's better for us if we can program the actual dimensions on the drawing into the machine and not have to allow for the radius of the tool. To achieve that, we use something called cutter compensation. And this is how it works. There's two different G-codes that we use to tell the machine the size of our cutter. So the machine can work out the diameter and the radius of the cutter. So we can program direct to drawing dimensions and not have to add in this case, five millimeters to the profile all the way around. It's a very easy calculation for a machine to do. It's a little bit more difficult for us to do it on the fly as we're programming. Now the two types of G-codes that we use are G41 and G42. The G41 G-code tells the machine the material is to the left of the cutter, while G42 tells the machine the material is to the right. Depending on the machine, there is different ways we can tell the control the dimensions of the cutter. One of the most common is simply adding P and then the value of the radius afterwards, after the line of G41 or G42, as I've demonstrated on this slide. Let's look at the three main different ways that we can tell the machine the radius of our cutter. One of the most common ways on desktop CNC machines that you might find in a home workshop would be to add a p-value after the cutter compensation command. So a p-value of 5.0 would tell us that the cutter is 10 millimeters and that the radius is 5 millimeters. So the line G42 p5.0 would tell the machine that we wish to apply cutter compensation and the radius of the cutter is 5 millimeters. On some machines, it's also common to use an X value in the place of a P value. So this can also be written as G42 X 5.0. Depending on the machine controls, it's best to check with the operator's manual to see which statement is preferred for your particular machine. The third option is most commonly found on industrial machines with a built-in tool table into the controls of the machine. With this option, we simply need to just put G42. The information for the tool geometry is inside the tool table that we put in during the setup of the machine and the tooling. Let's have a look at a typical tool table in a machine. A typical tool table will include our tool number. This is called up when we do a tool call within the program. For example, when we call T01 for tool one, it will pull this information from the tool table and apply it to our cutter that is live in the spindle. Then our tool geometry, our geometry for X and our geometry for Y. This tells the machine the position of the cutter in the 3D environment within the machine grid. And so the machine knows where the tool is. Next up, we have our offsets for X and Y dimensions. This is to compensate for cutter wear so we can make sure the machine cuts the size that we programmed it to. And finally, we have tool radius. On a lathe, this would be classed as tool nose radius. That is the radius of the insert tip that we are using. But on a milling cutter, it's the radius of the tool. So half the diameter. In this case, five millimeters. This is the number that the machine looks for when deciding how far to offset our tool by when using cut and compensation. So how do we apply that within a program? Let's have a look. We place our cutter compensation command after we've done a tool call, but before we move any axes. So just after the G21, G90 seems a good place. So here I've put G42 to tell the cutter that we're offsetting to the right of the material with P5 is our radius of our cutter. Once we've programmed our profile, we end our block with G40. This tells the machine to turn cutter compensation off. So, how does all this work with our Hello World program we are writing? Now, just before our rapid movement, I've added G42 P5.0. This tells our cutter that we're offsetting to the right with a 5mm radius. And it means we can now program to the dimensions on the drawing without having to offset everything by 5mm to allow for the dimensions of the cutter.